Okay, so we're taking out a high lifter snorkel kit to make way for a SYA Warrior snorkel kit. Nice tie strap. It broke before I even touched it. So obviously you gotta undo the clamps, pull the snorkels off. And you gotta remember to subscribe and like the videos. Now, I didn't mind these uh, snorkel kits. Uh, this one was pretty good. Is it worth over 300 bucks? I don't think any kit is worth over 300 bucks. But this one was rigid the whole way. Gonna pop the pod off. And right there you see these silver switches. They're waterproof switches. One of them is for accent LED lighting I, I had. And the other one is for the Hayden fan control module. So there you go, those are the accent LED lighting I had. Uh, I'm not gonna need those anymore. And it's the back side of the switches, which are just uh, push on connections, waterproof. So that's pretty handy if you're taking things apart quite often. Having problems with my fat hands in there, just can't get the clip. Those LED lights, I just got to give them a little snip. They were hardwired in there. That's it, that pod's basically garbage. Good close up view of some tools on the rack. So the problem I had with, with this kit, oh, there's my homemade uh, tether, just so no branch knocks a key off while you're in the, in the bush. The problem I had with the snorkel kit was the rigid pipe along the side panel on your left leg. It, it's pushing, it was pushing the panel. And even in the instructions it said you won't be able to use a push pin in there, uh, that there's no room to use a tie strap because the panel push out. Now the panel was pushing out, it wasn't bothering me in the leg or anything, it was bothering me that it was bending the panel and the paint was starting to crack. Those switches there, they're the same type I had on the pod. One's for floodlights I have on the front bumper, LED floodlights, and the other one is a spare switch. You can see when I pull this, this panel off, I gave myself a lot of slack with the wire. And my big decision here, do I leave it hooked up? Do I unplug it? Yeah, let's unplug it. flashlight here now it's easier to pull this panel off when you take out the push pins in the fender well which I'm making it look like I know what I'm doing here and for some reason I think I only pulled one out give me a minute I'll figure out that there's still one more there Now, I don't take off this little black panel where you go in the rear uh, fender well and do those push pins. I just kind of pull this tab out there and that's it. See? I figured it out. Look how much easier that was when you pull out all the pins. Then I finally decided let's get rid of the key. So you can see the rigid pipe there. I tucked it in as tight as I could. Even that kit, uh, the, the high uh, lifter kit, 
is missing some pipes but so there you can see the bottom left is what was touching the panel and the top top circle shows that I couldn't even use that push pin And I did trim some of the structure, the plastic structure, under the seat to get all the clamps to fit and everything there. These circles are actually showing the uh, stainless steel all around I used to hold up the uh, pipes. So I used the all around to secure the pipe as tight as possible to the bike and it still pushed the panel out. The upper all around strap on the pipe is, is where I am now is just, it's actually using the factory bolt from the CVT intake, but remember you had to cut the pipe for the uh, high lifter. Just trying to undo the clamps. Let's take off that silicone hose there from the CVT exhaust. And here I'm a little bit surprised how how easy it came out considering it was silicone together. And then here I'm just gonna try to get the whole thing out in one piece without breaking any wiring harness or anything like that. I can get it out without cutting it. Oh, there it is. Gently throw it in the corner, worry about it later. Now I'm staring at the uh, CVT intake and I'm like, oh, great. I gotta take out the inner wheel well. I know it, I don't want to.
And this one, this one curves over to the right of the bike through the pod. So I'll figure out that I'm going to have to cut it to get it out. Shot of my knee. Hey, Spielberg's got nothing on me. Look at this. Got the intake one out, out of the way there. That was an easy one. It's just clamped in the rubber pipe. Here it looks like it gave up on the uh, CBT intake. Went back to this piece. And there you can see the plate better that's covering up the hole for the, uh, the heat shield where the original CVT uh, exhaust went into, the rubber boot. I do like how everybody gives you all this tape and stuff for heat shielding, where there was a rubber boot from the factory going into the heat shield. And everyone else is concerned about the pipes close to the heat shield. So, I don't know. Now you're probably saying, oh, but you got the fan controller. I put the fan controller on because, yeah, it gets hot left side of the bike, especially when you're out there in the bush in, in July and you're not doing, you know, 100 down the, down the road or through the trails. Oh, this is where I gave in and I said, yep, have to take the inner uh, wheel well out. That's a tire, in case anybody didn't know that. That's what we're staring at right now. It's rubber. Turns. Who knew this is an educational channel also? I'm still working on that uh, inner fender well, eh? I'm starting to think why I didn't edit this all out. I gently just threw that over to the side. That's one way to do it. I'm still staring at this tire. I like it. It's, it's very round. with the CVT intake there. I know one of the clamps was getting a little bit rusty. Give me a minute and I'm gonna say, yep, I need something to cut this pipe. Almost getting tempted to grab a sozzle and just start hacking away. But, trying to be civil. Yeah, she's not coming out. It's close to it, but it's not coming.
through the magic of film, I went to get my little uh, hacksaw and started hacking away at it. Oh, there we go. And again, gently throw it in the corner. Now, just got to remove the rack. The rack and the little hood. See, with this, uh, with the high lifter, you didn't have to move the fuse panel. With the Warrior, you, you're going to move the fuse, the, the fuse panel, the block. You're going to move it. You got to cut a little bit of, of rubber or plastic out, and you're going to move it. Now, I know my rack's giving me problems because I've taken it off a couple times and those bolts are stripping or the nuts are stripping. So when I go to put it back on, I'm going to probably have to put some through bolts or something. Modify it a little bit. I should just put wing nuts on it because I take it off so, so many times. A couple cotter pins. You'll see I also try to cheat a little bit. I don't take off the bumper, especially now that I got the floodlights right where the bolts are to take off the bumper. So I just loosen the top bolts and kind of bend the bumper out of the way. And bending it forward is actually helping it because it was bent back from clipping trees and stuff. At least uh, I added in this shot of this tire so you can see it's the same as the other side. Yep, yep, it's the same rim as the other side too. I don't know if you noticed that. Just want to point that out. Since we keep uh, staring at it. Seems to be taking a long time for four bolts, but of course they're different sizes. Now those uh, Torx bolts, those ones are stripping too in there. I know that much I gotta, once again, put through bolts. That should be fun in there.
Yeah, at least I was smart enough to remove the tools from the rack before taking the rack off. Now to pop the hood. Obviously I gotta slide it towards the bumper. So that's where the bumper will be in the way and a little pull. The bumper just kind of moves out of the way. I've done it before, so I know I can do it. Oh, there we go. See? A little bend. She's good to go. It's all filthy, so I'm probably gonna have to get a rad relocate. This is after the bike's been pressure washed, so clearly not a good job. It looked like it, but 